On January 22nd, 2016, V Westlife uploaded a video entitled I Home, not I Crap, IH5 Clock Radio slash iPod Dock. Imagine my surprise when I went to the thrift store today and found a nearly identical, or what I thought was an identical model. Now, ordinarily, I probably wouldn't pay this kind of money for something like this because I personally don't have much of a use for an iPod dock, although I do have an iPod that is compatible with it. And we might even try and test that out, although there isn't any music on that thing. If we take a look here, you can see that this is actually the iHome iH6. I'm not quite sure what the difference between the iH6 and the iH5 is. Maybe it's the external antenna that comes with this, I'm not quite sure. There's some other operating and frequencies and things. It takes two AA batteries, which is interesting for a clock radio. What's even more interesting is it looks like they're put in there. You put the batteries in the same way, that's what I'm trying to say there. But uh, there we can see information. Various things having to do with it. If V Westlife is still looking for a power supply for that or is wondering about that, this is what it looks like. Massive freaking brick, that's what this is. Uh, held together with Phillips head screws, there are three of them. It is a 15 volt DC, 1.5 amp power supply. Obviously it says iHome on it. It is white in color. And it does seem to be fairly well made. It's heavy. I'm actually, In fact, what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to get out the scale and we're going to measure some of this stuff. Oh yes, I'd like to go on a little bit of a rant about thrift stores right now. They try. They really do. They try really hard, but the problem is is there are still people at these stores who, you know, put the things on the shelves and price them, who seem to think that it is in their best interest to take, if they get something, I don't know, if it's brand new in the box, they'll take the box and the manuals and they'll throw all that away because nobody reads manuals and nobody keeps boxes anymore. And they'll take, like, power supplies, remote controls, even antennas if they possibly can, and they'll take it and spread it all over the store and have different price tags on it. I don't know why they do this. And it's seriously irritating when I find something that I like, hint, hint, Dell Latitude LM that I'm still looking for a power supply for. They do that and I can't, I, I don't want it because I don't have the power supply for that. But sometimes they kind of get it right. This thing was all together. But the thing that they got so wrong is they put packing tape all over it, and they used that to hold it together. I completely understand using packing tape to hold this all together, but it's so annoying. It really is, because it gets all over everything, it doesn't come off, and they used way too much of it. Seriously. It's annoying when I have to take off layers upon layers upon layers of packing tape just so I can unravel a cord, or take something off of a printer, or whatever. And here is the scale. Yeah, I'm doing this on a laptop, which actually is ironically another thrift store find I didn't get the power supply for. We'll see. Of course, I'm making the assumption this thing's got a good battery in it. Let's see if the power supply overloads it. 721 gram power supply. I think that's the heaviest power supply I've got. It's fluctuating a bit. Maybe it would help if I put this on a flat surface, or more flat surface than that. How much does the unit weigh? 1312. So this is actually a little, weighs a little bit more than half of what the actual unit does. That's kind of funny, actually. It's even more funny when you've got something that the remote control that only weighs 22 grams. Starting off at the back here, so we could take a look at these, which I believe are just base ports. There's the DC input. 15 volts, 1500 milliamps. Somebody actually took the line in cord, or it's actually a, uh, it's just a normal 8th inch TRS cable, and they went from the line out into the line in. I'm not sure if that's necessary for it to work, but I would highly doubt it. We've got a clock adjust here, we've got a time zone, and then we've got a DST switch because it supports time zone. So. All right, let's see. This, I believe, is a built-in antenna, probably for the FM, and this is the AM antenna, which just... Well, maybe it doesn't unplug. I'm not quite sure. There's the other base port. All right, on the front, we can kind of see the massive speakers that this thing has. Well, 
Okay, I shouldn't say they're massive speakers. They're massive for a clock radio. Even for something like this. Let's see if I can get some light on here so we can see. There's the speaker driver itself. You can see just how big it is. I'd say maybe it's about an inch and a half, maybe a two inch driver. Um, they sound decent, I'll give you that. But of course, I'm going to definitely let you hear from it yourself. Um, on this video, of course, color through this microphone, on this camera, and by your speakers, but anyways. See, so here's what I paid for it. There's actually a little bit of a crack that I didn't notice right here. This is some uh, shattering of the plastic. I'm not quite sure what causes that, but uh, there you go. This little USB port up here that says shuffle on it is for the iPod shuffle. Um, I think that might be what separates this from the iH5, is that this supports the newer iPod shuffles. The, this is the volume control. It's a little turn knob. Here's the setting knob. It's got four presets, I believe, for the radio, iPod, radio, equalization, sleep timer, alarm on or off, alarm one, alarm two, and alarm reset, which is power off. I believe that might turn the radio off. The snooze button, which is also a dimmer, the obligatory iPod dock, and the screen on the front. I was a little concerned that it had broken in the amount of time that I'd been making this video, but then I realized, hey, wait a minute. You gotta plug it in at the back. <laughs> well, anyways, here you can see we've got the backlight, and unlike on V Westlife's model, this one actually works. So I can show you kind of how the dimmer works. It's not a very fine-tuned dimmer at all. I mean, that is on right there. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but the backlight is on, just barely. I can't see it. That's as bright as it goes. That's a blinking battery symbol. I'm not quite sure why it looks broken, but it does. So I'm going to probably put some batteries in this. Um, but uh, anyways, oh, I wanted to show something else that I just noticed now. Uh, well, I'll do it at the end of the video. Uh, but we can go ahead and turn on the radio. We can hear it. It's funny, these controls weren't working that well earlier. Well, they're kind of jumpy. Oh, yes, let's actually put something on, shall we? Ah, there we go. That's really jumpy. This is the one that didn't work too well. You can probably tell I'm fighting with it. There's the actual station. I better, be, I better be careful with that. Enjoy all inclusive living and change the station with this remote. Oh, it does work. Not very well, but it is working. Okay, let's see. Silence. That's interesting. How come, you ask? So you can probably tell that the control up here is not all that great. I don't think it's because I'm doing something wrong. Anyways, let's see if I can turn the radio off. Yes, that's how you turn the radio off. And on. You can do it with the remote control or the power off button. On the clock itself. Uh, I should probably demonstrate an alarm and see if I can get that to work. Probably just a little bit off with that. 
I'm trying to set the alarm and I can't quite figure out how to do it. So I've been doing some looking into this and it looks as though it does not have the ability to wake to a beeper, it just has the iPod and the radio. It just has the beeper in the back for certain other characteristics. But let's turn on the EQ here. This doesn't have the best controls in the world. With Ottawa Gatineau's greatest hits. Boom! 99.7. Pronounced. Alright, I'm going to shut that up before I get my video muted. Which it'll probably just get muted anyways, because that's usually what happens. Actually, I did get a video muted recently because of uh, something I played, so that's kind of unfortunate. I had to re-upload the video. Uh, but fortunately, it hadn't gone public yet, so there you go. I actually had to reshoot something. That was kind of annoying. So anyways, I'm probably going to set this and I'll get some batteries. And we'll see if that works. But, uh, there you go, really. Alright, so it's got batteries in it now, and it doesn't complain of that. Let's see what happens when I unplug it. Uh, you can see that the backlight goes off. But it still keeps the display on. That's one of the only clocks that you'll find that'll keep the display on. Maybe that's the reason why they use alkaline batteries, or there's double A's as opposed to a 9 volt. I'm still not quite sure exactly what their reasoning for that was, but... Hey, they did it, so I guess there's one thing. Well, I said I'd look at this iPod. I don't think there's any music on it. But as you can see, I believe it will actually charge inside this. I should turn the volume down. I can't turn the volume down. Heh! <laughs> won't let me do that. Oh, yes, it will. Okay, so we've got it in iPod mode now. It is charging. Let me unlock it. You hear any noises? Oh, uh, let's see. I don't think it's got any music on it. I'd be very surprised if it did. Yeah, no content. Okay. Well, I'll have to see if I can get something to work. Well, I can get this to work. That sounds like the EQ turned on. Well, that's not nearly as impressive as I was expecting. The controls do work, though. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's see, what else can I do here? I haven't really customized that. Let's see if I can play a YouTube video. These, because I don't have any iPod or anything that would be compatible with that dock there, but I remember seeing a video by YouTube user Stereo Dust Particles about a similar iHome clock radio. I think his is a slightly newer model. But this one is pretty similar. It's the IH5. And uh, I remember the one he reviewed had very nice sound through its built-in speakers. And had pretty good reception. So I decided to pick this one up. It was only $5. It's slightly yellowed. You can see the color is supposed to be right there. It's supposed to be just white, but it faded. Alright, so there you have it. The iHome IH6 which, just like the Westlife's IH5, is definitely not iCrap. I'm probably going to take this, and I'm going to put it up there where the candle is, and I might take the candle over there and replace this over here, which I need to make a video about as well. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.